Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the IACT IMDHA Presenter Series. We're getting ready for the Hypno Expo, which is coming up on May 21st through the 23rd online. Uh, and uh, for those of us who live in Orlando, in Orlando. It's also coming to a city near you. But May 21st to the 23rd is the conference. We've got pre and post conference programs uh, before and after as well. And uh, in this presenter series, what we're doing is interviewing the folks that are offering those pre and post conference programs. So we're gonna begin tonight with, uh, with some really special people. Now it's, it's very weird because usually when I start out this program, I get to introduce my co-host, uh, Karen Hand. Some of and you can. You well, can do that. Why, you know, why make an exception? Well, I, and I, as a matter of fact, I am going to do that. But but she's wearing a different hat today as well, because at least during the first segment uh, here, she's going to be talking about the program that she's offering, uh, along with Ashley Caputo. So let me just go ahead and start there. Uh, the program is called Post-Pandemic Problem Solving, the Help Out Protocol. And uh, that's going to be on Monday, May 24th. It's a full day workshop. Uh, on the day after the conference weekend. So you definitely want to do that. They're going to have some great stuff to tell you about it. But let me tell you just a little bit about these folks. First of all, Karen, I don't know where to start with Karen because, uh, you know, I can I see words on a page and stuff in this little bio, but I just know you so well and, and so appreciate all the stuff that you do for the, for the chapter and, you know, and, and being part of this year are certainly a presence in this organization. So everybody everybody knows Karen and, and appreciates what she's done. She's written a lovely book, by the way, called Magic Words and Language Patterns, and uh, also a book on uh, hypnotic, uh, offering hypnotic, oh, there you go. And the other is Hypnosis Workshops Like like a Pro. Uh, so uh, really, really some good, uh, good material. She uh, was a uh, radio uh, host, a, a radio celebrity in Chicago. Uh, with a 30-year career in radio that uh, really sort of honed her up as a powerful communicator uh, and uh, is, contributes to the work that she does with us now. She is joined in the program that she's doing at the conference here by Ashley Caputo. And, and I got to tell you, see, I have a connection with Ashley too, because I just happen to be currently the president of the Hypnosis Education Association, which is a Florida organization. And Ashley is just one of the angels that we have uh, behind the scenes that, uh, that do all kinds of great stuff for us. So we really appreciate her for that. She is a member of IACT and IMDHA and IAIH. I'm not actually sure which one that is. Uh, and the ICBCH. She's a, a former, or she's a presenter and she's a member for HEA. She owns and operates Unwind the Mind Hypnosis and Wellness in St. Petersburg, Florida, uh, where she combines her knowledge as a uh, yoga meditation instructor, a student yoga therapist, a Reiki master, and a hypnotherapist to uh, assist her clients in transforming themselves into their true state of wholeness, aligning body, mind, and soul to achieve the life of their dreams. So uh, welcome, Ashley. By the way, I don't see you on my screen yet. So uh, so say hello. I promise I'm here. Hi. So good to be here. <laughs> well, it's good. It's, it's great to have you here. I'm excited about this because the program that you guys are doing um, really comes yeah. out of the experience of the last year that you know, so many people have dealt with. And, 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 and I'd kind of like to start there. And I don't know who wants to take this question, but how did you actually get to this to, to creating this program that you're that you're offering at the, at the conference. Let me just say first that when we named it post-pandemic problem solving, we made the assumption that we would be post-pandemic by now, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? And all best plans, but it is also pandemic problem solving because we have really been testing this out. We spent quite a bit of time testing this with all sorts of people and discovering really what works, whether one has had COVID or not. We got started with this idea because Ashley had COVID. And well, tell us about your experience with the virus. Yes, yeah, so I, I was blessed in the sense that uh, I didn't need hospital care. Uh, however, I was considered a long hauler because the symptoms and the virus stayed in my system so long. I had very long lasting fatigue. That would probably be my main concern. Uh, my partner had more of the brain fog, but it just lasted and lasted for months and months and months. And, and so, um, so that led me to, um, to start, and a couple other things like the anosmia, the lack of taste and smell, but that led me to start um, 
speaking with Karen about um, using some hypnotic kind of approaches to deal with the fatigue and we had some amazing results. And then I went on to, sorry, Karen and I always talk really, over each other. <laughs> no, it was really interesting that, that, you know, we really just started playing around with this. Hey, we've got some skills. Let's see what we can do. And when, when somebody presents themselves and I say, yeah, let's try to work it out. And we tried some hypnosis and her fatigue changed. Did it not, Ashley? It certainly did. It was amazing. Was it instant or, or was it over time? Well, you know, I think the answer to that would be both because there were some instant changes, but I think, you know, things, I like to say hypnosis is magical, but it's not magic. There was some follow-up. I mean, I, I started doing some things on my own as well, and then I had more and more good results too. So we started out that way where we were just playing with this. And then uh, Ashley is a specialist with essential oils and lost taste and smell. Mm -hmm. I mean, how scary is that, right? right? So Ashley then started doing a lot of research on anosmia and uh, and was noticing on her own because Ashley was using, you know, lavender. I think, right, was your scent to to anchor calmness. Yes, it was. It was my go-to to get to get myself into a calm state. I'd anchored uh, lavender and calm and my little phrase and. I was like, oh, it's not working. <laughs> wow. Yeah, the, I, research, the research then started weighing in on how that essential oils was exactly what was being used in some places to reconnect those sensors. And, you know, you add that, you couple that with the imagination. I'll bet we've all used the lemon technique, right? To help explain hypnosis. And if you can imagine out of nothing, tasting a lemon, not having one, but you can, it can actually cause a pucker or salivation. We thought, well, the imagination and having something to connect it to might really work. And as it turns out, it does. <laughs> it's an amazing thing. <laughs> all that reconnecting. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry, all about reconnecting those neural pathways. It's yeah. amazing. You, you've been using a word, or you used it just once, but I, I but I, I'm st still echoing in my brain because I've never heard it before, uh, and it's a, it's new learning from COVID, isn't it? But anosmia is this is the name of this condition? Yeah. So anosmia is the the loss of your your sense, the, and then you, the taste as well. Well. Okay. So as we did some research on this, as we were testing these out, because we were trying a bunch of different things, one of the things we, we talked about was we know a bunch of modalities. We know mm -hmm. hypnosis. We know NLP. We use EFT. Essential oils is one of uh, Ashley's go-tos, as well as breathing techniques in yoga. And we thought we, can, we have a bunch of modalities. Let's throw them at some things and see what applies, see what works. Mm -hmm. And as we did the research, we even worked with a woman who had lost her, her sense of smell through sinus surgery. So, mm -hmm. you know, they would say something was snipped or whatever. I don't know what they would say, but she said she hadn't been able to. She lost 95% of her smell from this sinus surgery. And so we worked with that and we started out with using lavender, an essential oil, because she loves that scent and, and the imagination. And she really, 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 what she wanted was to smell roses. She loved mm -hmm. roses and she couldn't smell them at all. And we started out with imagining what the rose smells like mm -hmm. and really getting deeper and deeper and deeper into that imagining. Get with the, how does the rose feel? How many petals are on the rose? What color is it? What exact color is it? Getting more and more and more into it. And the more she got into it, the more she could say, oh yes, I can definitely imagine the smell of the rose. And so, okay, excellent. And she said, yeah, that's great. But I mean, how do, but when does it become real? And so we did some work around that, some coaching around that. How does it become real? And her big question was, well, okay, so I can imagine the scent of a rose and I can get back the smell of a rose, but what if I come across something that I've never smelled before? How will I know what that smells like? And I said, well, that's the best situation of all. Then you can make it smell like anything you want it to smell like, right? And just have that as your orientation. This woman, over the course of a week, 
worked with uh, with roses. She got roses and had them and had had them in different rooms and she would smell them and she would really get into them. And by the end of a week, she was actually connected back to the scent of roses and was working with lavender, imagining lavender fields and, and using lavender through her house. And she connected back all of her smells. She still worked on, not all of them, but she has most of them back. She was at 95% gone when we started with her and she's almost at 95% return now. And Karen, how long was she with that? It was two or three years at least. Yeah, it was right? a long time. It was a long time and she'd was, given up hope. I mean, yeah, she's totally given up. She was, she was really wanting to work on, you know, other things and this came up. And so yeah, she, she was our skeptic. <laughs> yeah. And she so was beautiful for this. And a lot of other things changed for her as well. Um, there were, there were things that through the pandemic, this particular test case through the pandemic, she'd become uh, more and more withdrawn and depressed because of isolation. And one of the things that she really wanted back in her life was meeting with people, being with people, especially her grandchildren and her daughter. And, and uh, she wanted that back. And so we talked about, okay, let's chunk it down and find out ways that you can get that back. And she's, well, I can't get it back. We're on lockdown and I can't go anyplace. And until I get the vaccine, I can't do anything. And we said, okay, well, vaccines are available almost every place. And she said, I haven't been able to get one. I haven't been able to get one. And so we chunked her world down to, she didn't have to worry about um, ever being able to see people or anything like that. Her only concern was really focusing in on where she could actually get the vaccine rather than it's not available any place. She got an appointment the next day to get the vaccine. So when you chunk it down, right, then the world opens up. But when you're in over, so that's how we work with it. There are a lot of things that occur and overwhelm is one of them. Stress is one of them. The biggest, of course, is stress because mm -hmm. stress causes most dis-ease in the world. And what's the best way to get over stress? Hypnosis. <laughs> you're muted, Michael. I am. Thank you. You call it a mixed modality approach. And as you mentioned, you've got all these different modalities and things that you're using. So, so help me understand, because as you're describing uh, the help out protocol as a protocol, is it, is it like a, a series of specific steps? Well, we have this real corny thing that we do. Ashley, you want to do our corny thing? <laughs> sure. So we have the help out H stands for hypnosis. Hypnosis to help you get out of that stress state. E is for energy to overcome fatigue. L is for lucidity to get rid of that brain fog. P is for pain management and metaphoric shifts. O is for opening up to your sensory awarenesses, maybe getting back that taste and smell. Unity is aligning mind, body, and spirit. And T is for takeoff. It can be taking off pandemic pounds, taking off into the future, or taking off into the life that you want to have. And what we do with that protocol, I mean, that was just our little corny thing that we put together about that. But what we do with that is in all of those areas, we're using the various modalities. Sometimes we, we use hypnosis in all of it. I will tell you that hypnosis is found every place because the imagination is what gets us to the finish line. But in there, we also have NLP techniques that we, that we teach for reconnecting things. We have other techniques that we talk about with chunking down so that you can really get into what you're using. EFT to help you get release what you don't want and get more of what you do want. So, and then essential oils, of course, we're using. So all of those modalities are taught in various places as we're talking about how to get back what you're using. Now, all of the techniques that we, that we use can be used for any of these elements. We're using some fairly common sometimes techniques. You know about the control room of the mind, probably. And we've got a control room of the mind script that we're applying to a number of different things where you have to really go inside and make some changes. We're using these techniques in various ways as we go through the protocol, but also giving you ideas on how to use these various techniques, NLP, EFT, uh, hypnosis, of course, essential oils, and breathing techniques to get you where you want to be. 
That's right. We also use some mindfulness meditation mixed in with some of the hypnosis and LP coaching techniques. And keeping in mind that while we do have kind of a set protocol, it's client centered work. So whoever comes in front of us, we cater it to them and we just kind of coattail it towards what they need to have too. That was one of our favorite things, actually, when we were working with uh, our, our test cases. You know, Ashley's in Florida and I'm in Chicago. So we did everything that we've done with this uh, online. All of these techniques we have used in person. They all work perfectly well in person. But because of the pandemic, we adapted it all to online and discovered what we could use online. You know, OK, here's an example. How in the world are you going to use essential oils online? <laughs> Hey, you're the expert, Ashley. You answer that one. And I'm not even the interviewer here. Sorry, Michael. Right. <laughs> she, she likes to take over, doesn't she? I love her. So, you know, so it's interesting. So if folks register in advance for a workshop that Karen and I do, or especially this one, Hypno Expo, then I snail mail. If they're within the continental United States, I snail mail um, a little sample. And if not, then I give some examples of what you might find around your own house to use. So for instance, the three oils and most of the oils that they used in the, the research that I studied were slightly different, but they said that any would work. So I chose lavender, which is a flower, lemon, because we do the lemon test and most people have a citrus kind of scent in their house and then peppermint because most people have mint, whether it's toothpaste or you know something else. And if they don't have that, we can always use coffee, something that they're gonna have. Cool. So the essential oils kit is a fun thing to have, but also when you're working online and you're working on the fly, you got to have things that you can use that people might have. People might have coffee grounds, as an example. People might have some other sense around that they can use and that we can help reconnect those pathways. Nice. So when you're talking about uh, post-pandemic uh, post problem solving, you, you've mentioned several things already, the kind of things that, you know, that people are dealing with. And, and as you said in the, in the very beginning, uh, you know, whether people have had COVID or not, we've all been affected by this and, and our worlds have just changed in a, in a million ways. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm, I'm wondering what, what other kinds of issues have you found? And, uh, and can this just, can the work that you're doing just be adapted to whatever it is that, that comes up in a session with a client or, or how does that, how does that work? What, what, That's a, any, anything after the pandemic seems to me that it would be a post pandemic issue, you know? Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great question. And we actually have had some surprises in our test studies and it's worked perfect. So Karen, you want to share? We had, uh, we hadn't <laughs> actually planned to talk about sleep or insomnia as an example. That, I think it's great when I have insomnia, I get more done. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, people were home, there was nothing else to do but sleep. So it just didn't really occur to us as, as putting it on our list. But certainly in our test cases, one of the things that, and duh, you know, we kind of rolled our eyes when it came up because of course, stress is going to affect sleep. And uh, one of our test cases said that, yes, it was her sleep that was most affected, but whether she was uh, on lockdown and at home or going back and forth to work, either way, the stress level was so high that she was having trouble sleeping. And OK, so we talk a lot in this workshop about client centered work, really listening to the client and, and hearing what they're saying about the issue they're experiencing. So as she was talking about her lack of sleep, I had to wonder, uh, what was she thinking about as she was going to sleep? And she said, well, everything that needs to be done and all the things of the day and, and everything that she couldn't have anymore, all the people that she was missing and all of that stuff. And I said, okay, I understand that's what you're thinking about at sleep. So right now, what would you rather be thinking about? What's a better thought? And she said, well, there are lots of better thoughts. I said, what's your favorite day of the week? And she said, Saturday. How come? Because I don't have anything to do on Saturday. I can just take it. It's so easy. There's no stress on a Saturday. And I said, that's really interesting. So think about Saturday and close your eyes for a moment. And she was extremely relaxed with that. She applied the word Saturday to her sleep routine. And she said she hasn't had a sleepless night since because she changed what she was thinking about going to sleep. And that's what we talk about it being client centered. If she had come up with some other kind of metaphor or something else that was going on, my mind won't shut down. My mind is, is racing. We might've we given her the Melissa Tears peripheral vision 
technique, right? So there are many techniques that can be applied to what someone is talking about. They know what they don't want. What is really helpful is moving them in a direction to find what they do want instead. I'm, I'm really thinking that a post-pandemic issue that's bound to come up, <clears throat> you know, is that you, you mentioned that this particular woman was uh, thinking about all the people that she wasn't seeing, you know, and all of that. Well, gosh, as we start getting back out into the world and putting on our hazmat suits, you know, uh, mm -hmm some people are going to have problems with the people that they're going to have to start seeing again <laughs> as they get back to work. And, and how are we going to adjust to the, to the, whatever the new normal is going to be as well? Or, or people, when they get back to their workplace and find out that half of the people have left and gone on and are, are not coming back at all, or uh, everything will be different. Everything will be different. And it's another thing that, that we will talk about, change. Mm -hmm. And it depends on how you think of change. Mm -hmm. Humans have a really bad habit of talking about how terrible change is. Oh, I hate change. Change is bad. I don't want to do change. Change stresses me out, et cetera, et cetera. Well, that's just one half of the change equation, is it not? Because really, as we're talking to somebody about change, we want to talk to them about Change is really the most constant thing in our universe. Change is the thing that we do all the time without effort. Change is the thing that comes so naturally to us. Not those specialty change days, like when you change at daylight savings time or something like that, but regular old ordinary everyday change, like when you're driving. Without even thinking about it, you change lanes. Without even thinking about it, you change the way you, the position of your turn signal. Without even thinking about it, you change all kinds of things. Like you make change. If you are a cashier, you uh, change your mind. You change your opinion. You change your socks. For heaven's sake, we hope you changed your underwear today. So change is the <laughs> easiest thing of all, as long as we put it in the framework of what can be accomplished rather than overwhelm and what can't be done. So then we narrow it down to what is the specific issue? I love specificity. So what is the specific issue that is causing you angst going back to work or not seeing people or whatever it is? And then how do we move off of that negative? Simply, we, we talk a lot in our work about the meta pattern, associating into the problem. Well, we all know easily how to associate into the problem. Dissociate from the problem. Mm -hmm. Associate into a solution or place yourself in a place where you can find a solution and then attach that solution to the problem. And that's what we do in every single case. What is the issue? Okay, now let's stop thinking about that and let's move over here and think about something else. And we'll also teach ways to break those states and break those chains of thought, break that stuff that's holding you down. We talk about pain management. You know, even pre, post, during pandemic, pain is an issue. Lots of people have pain. People have pain from imagined pain, from loss. They have pain from physical kinds of pain. And uh, a metaphoric shift is something we explore with a lot of people when it comes to change. What Focus in on that change, go right to where it is, tell me about it. What size is it? What shape is it? What color is it? What's the texture of it? Um, and then once you find something that the client can metaphorically in their imagination change, change occurs automatically, naturally, and easily. And so we'll teach again how to use that kind of metaphoric look at an issue and make the change. As we're going, to, as we're going through the day of, of our workshop, we have different points that we're definitely going to hit. The brain fog, the uh, fatigue, the anosmia, loss of taste and smell. We're going to hit those areas. And then whatever else comes up, we're going to show how the techniques that we are offering in this workshop can be applied to that scenario. How you take these techniques and make them your own and adapt them to whatever happens to come up in the discussion with your client post or, uh, I mean, during or post pandemic. Great. So, so by the way, you, you know, you were talking about uh, pain and I was thinking that uh, uh, one kind of pain, there's one kind of pain that really isn't a problem uh, that I just thought that I would point out and that is pain customers. So, uh, so, <laughs> so everybody, everybody wants them, particularly those of us who are working in hypnosis and, and the pandemic has really uh, 
really revolutionized our industry. So here we are spending uh, this evening online and we've been working with our clients online for the last year. Um, and hopefully, of course, uh, soon we're gonna be face-to-face -face, you know, once again as well. Will, will the protocol that you're doing here work both online and in-person sessions? It will, go ahead, Ashley. Absolutely. So all of these different steps in the protocol, the different techniques, modalities, if you will, we have both been using them individually, one-on-one, -on -one, face to face, as well as on Zoom before pandemic. And I'm also seeing it here in Florida, if we're open. So I see some folks using these modalities in person and on Zoom as well. And Karen's been using them on Zoom for longer than I have. And so, yeah, they started out in person. Mm -hmm. And then through necessity, you know, we're adapted already. So we had adapted most, I, I had already adapted most of the techniques I use to online. And I'm a firm believer, thanks to the instruction I got from my friend, Michael Watson, that I can do absolutely anything online. I believe that I can. I believe we can adapt all of our techniques uh, to use them right here. Yeah, that's right. You can't really play tennis. <laughs> well, I don't know. In the old days, they had Pong. That was certainly online. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and yeah. that was online tennis, my friend. <laughs> so, so here we are. We're talking about your your workshop itself, and and I'm wondering if you've got something from the workshop. Is there anything that you could share with us? Because uh, it'd be really nice for the folks uh, to get a little sample and uh, just a sense of uh, what it would be like to work with you guys. I share stuff on the presenter series and in the virtual chapter all the time. You know me too well. I would love to showcase Ashley. She did, um, as part of what we'll be teaching in the workshop, and as what, of, at what she did in, in our test cases, uh, she offered this beautiful gratitude work that I would say to the person who attended our test workshops and our test cases, They've all used this kind of thing and adapted it in a, a big variety of ways. So Ashley, would you share that with us? Sure, Karen likes to put me out there. So this is uh, based on a meta meditation basically. And I adapted it um, with Karen to be about gratitude to help with getting that sense of connection and relieving stress kind of thing. So anybody who would like to play along, I'll just invite you to either soften your gaze or close your eyes. Let's begin by taking a few nice and easy breaths in, getting yourself into that state that I know you all know how to. That's right. I'd like to invite you now to bring to mind a person, a being. It can even be a four-legged one if you prefer. It could also be a time or maybe it's a thing that you're truly grateful for in your life. You can take your time. Just help be as specific as you possibly can. Really getting in touch with that. That sense, see it, sense it, feel it, hear it. Using all of the senses available to you. Really getting back in touch with that particular moment. And all of the gratitude that you have for this being or this time, this thing, whatever it might be for you. Really feeling all of those good feelings right now. That's right. I'll let come to mind in any way you desire, someone who is dear to you, if you've not already done so. And repeat in your own mind, may he or she be well, healthy, and strong. May he or she be happy. May he or she abide in peace. May he or she feel safe and secure. May he or she feel loved and cared for. Now radiating out that experience of gratitude, love to any neutral being, such as those you might see around town or even on Zoom, but maybe you don't know that well, while repeating, may they be well, 
healthy and strong. May they be happy. May they abide in peace. May they feel safe and secure. May they feel loved and cared for. Now perhaps moving on to anyone you may have had some conflict or resistance with in the past, repeating in your mind, may this person be well, healthy and strong. May this person be happy. May this person abide in peace. May this person feel safe and secure. May this person feel loved and cared for. Now moving out that brilliant sense of gratitude to all living beings, to be human, animal, anything else. As you repeat in your own mind, may all beings be well, healthy, and strong. May all beings be happy. May all beings abide in peace. May all beings feel safe and secure. May all beings feel loved and cared for. Now feel all of that gratitude, that appreciation, just boomeranging right back to you in the whole universe. As you repeat to yourself, may I be well, healthy, and strong. May I be happy. May I abide in peace. May I feel safe and secure. May I feel loved and cared for. That's right. If you're really enjoying anything you're feeling now, feel free to Anchor into that with a word, a phrase, an image, a sound, anything at all. Maybe you take a deep breath in and name it. Naming it because it is yours. It's part of your being. Just anchoring into that so that you can bring it back into your physiology anytime you wish. That's right. And releasing any anchors. And taking another few easy breaths in and out. As it becomes right to you, slowly coming back to the room. And feeling all of that gratitude. Thank you. I think I, 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 there has to be a pause here. <laughs> so uh, I'm, I'm sighing, you know. Uh, ah. That was very nice. That was a very beautiful experience, and uh, just lovely to to float and drift. And 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 as uh, as Karen said at the beginning, you know, stress is such a, a big issue here, and processes like this are just wonderful to uh, you know to take us to a, a, a nice place. So um, I'm I, I'm going to be I'm going to be coherent again in a moment. So, uh, so well, let me step in for a moment, if you don't mind, just to say that as an example with that. Um, we will talk about how that can be applied to a wide variety of things. You mentioned, Michael, you know, the problem of going back to the office and being with people that maybe you don't even like to be around very much and you've enjoyed the one-year vacation from them. Well, we can talk about how you can apply that process to them from a distance. And it's really interesting how distance healing or distance change occurs. When one starts thinking more positively or sending love or gratitude to an enemy, mm -hmm. the enemy somehow starts to change. Yeah, yeah. And as you two encounter each other, the encounter become, begins to be different. Sure. So there is a way to take that very simple 
uh, gratitude process and apply it to this different element, depending on what the client needs. Uh, the, the client who talked to us about uh, needing sleep um, and, and Saturday became her big code word for relaxing and going to sleep. When we did this process, she said, oh my gosh, I feel so much loss at not being around certain family members and friends. And she said, with that, I just sent all of that to them and I feel so much better about it. Yeah. So even if it comes to that feeling of loss or sadness, you know, with post-pandemic, loss can go pretty deep. I mean, some people lost, not just taste and smell, but family members, yeah. loved ones. Businesses. And, I'm sorry. Businesses. Businesses, all sorts of things. And how do we bridge that gap? How do we, uh, and, and I'm not exactly sure now that you bring up businesses, how that might apply to a business strategy, but give us a minute and we'll come up with how one of our techniques okay. will definitely work even for that. I, I'm sure you will, because this is what I what I think when we go back to work, some people who are working in offices, and fortunately for me, it's been 40 years since I've done any work in somebody else's office, but but procedures are going to be changed. Other things, it's not, not only about interacting with other people and, and having gratitude for them and sending them peace and all that stuff, but, but uh, the, the environment itself uh, uh, to, to re, reconnect with it in, in new ways is a... It could be an important thing. That ending piece of, of having it boomerang back to you, mm -hmm. just lovely, because then you get to feel all of those wonderful feelings. We do, um, and at another point, we talk about, and I mentioned it already, the control room of the mind. And in the script that we use for the particular control room of the mind that we're doing, and everybody gets handouts who attends the workshop, they get all the handouts and all the scripts and all of that stuff. But in that particular control room of the mind, at the end, after you've got, and you're probably familiar with the control room of the mind, where you go into a room and you make your adjustments, and there is a book out there that's your manual, your life's manual. You can make all of the adjustments you want. Um, af after you do that, there is a mirror in this particular control room, and you look in the mirror and, and see the changed you. Um, reflecting back at you in the mirror. And as you're looking at that and getting closer and closer and closer, you actually reach out to that changed you, touch hands, connect, and you are connecting with that desired feeling or, or wanting. That can be applied to almost anything. That comes back to you, you know, in lots of people when, when we, they do that reconnecting with their authentic self, you know, that can produce that feeling of oneness. Sometimes you'll see the tears flow at that point because it feels so good to connect with your authenticity. All of those things are in the beauty of these scripts that can be taken. And, and our motto is take it and make it your own. We want in this workshop, we want it to be experiential because we want the participants to learn from the inside out, just as you did experience it from the inside out. Be curious about how you might use it and share with the room how you might find a use for that because geez, Ashley and I don't have all the answers. I was never so happy about being a hypnotist when I realized I didn't have to have the answers. I needed to pull those out of my client. <laughs> all right. So that's exactly what we want to do in the workshop too. Let's share our ideas. The, the better we all are, the better we all are. Lovely. Well, we are, we're only about four minutes away from, uh, from the end of this segment, I'm afraid. It goes by so quickly. So I'd like to make sure if anybody uh, in the audience has any questions or anything that they want to, uh, uh, want to ask. Uh, and, and in the meantime, while we're waiting, so, so if you've got a question, just unmute your microphone and just go ahead and, and, uh, and shout it out and, uh, and that'll work. Um, and while we're waiting for the first brave soul, I might ask Karen, it sounds like you just kind of answered the question I was going to ask. But the structure of your workshop then is going to consist of uh, experiential stuff. You're going to use breakout rooms and things, or uh... we will we will very likely use breakout rooms. Um, but we will be doing a lot of experiential and uh, discussion, experiential techniques. Here's the technique. Let's all experience it. And then let's talk about it. And let's talk about how that can be applied. Yes, we are going to talk about stress and look at specific hypnotic processes and others, breathing techniques. Ashley has some wonderful breathing techniques to 
to handle a lot of things. So we want you to experience the techniques and how they will work with stress, how they will work with fatigue, how they will work with loss, how they will work with et cetera. And then each one we want to expand out and what are your ideas? How can you see yourself applying this? What aspect might you apply this to? And then everybody experiences more that way. Yeah. I, I love uh, the, the breathing techniques you mentioned, just that Ashley brings her uh, her yoga experience into this. Uh, and here we are in uh, the 21st century applying uh, thousands of years worth of, uh, of learning and, and uh, understanding uh, uh, once again, you know, uh, comes, comes to play in the work that we do. We'll play some fun NLP games of borrowing benefits too, how you can borrow benefits from either other people or animals. Oh, nice. To mirror what you want in your life. Lovely. I, I, saw, you know, I saw Robert stroking a cat there. Ever want to be a cat? <laughs> yeah. Nice. I, I have been. Borrowing benefits. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Nice. That that would be beautiful. So so everybody, uh, May twenty fourth is a full day workshop uh, with uh, Ashley and Karen, uh, and uh, post pandemic problem solving the help out protocol. Uh, so you know, be there. Uh, call a hypnosis association near you and uh, be sure you get yourself signed up and registered uh, so that you can attend that, uh, that lovely workshop. So there we are. Um, any Thank last you so questions, much. anything? Nope. All right, so- uh, Linda, Linda seems to have one. Oh, please go ahead, Linda. Linda, your microphone is muted. Yes. Um, Karen, I just wanted to, to reiterate that um, the processes and, and uh, techniques that you and Ashley are going to share, they can certainly be used post-pandemic <laughs> in the future. Absolutely. Once, yeah. once the pandemic is over, they can apply those techniques to pretty much anything. Guess what? Fatigue is always going to be there. Pain is always going to be there. Uh, stress is always going to be there. Uh, having somebody that you don't like working with is always going to be there. Missing somebody is always yes. going to be there. Yes. Even all of the reason we said pandemic problem solving and not COVID problem solving is because some of the problems we've experienced in the pandemic are COVID related and some are isolation related and some are life related. Some people didn't have COVID, they weren't isolated and they still have pain because they're older. Right. They have arthritis and they need a way to manage it. So these problems will stay with us and you will have techniques to work with them even once the pandemic is over, whether you're in person or you're online. Yeah, yeah that's you. correct. They're definitely, they're definitely gonna work and they're gonna, it's gonna still be the same issues that people have. We just felt that it was compounded with the isolation, the pandemic, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Well, in yeah. fact, isn't that the beauty? It, it, as, as long as you mentioned gratitude, I would say, uh, uh, I think we owe, we owe COVID something in the sense that it has tasked us. Uh, and it, it, you know, it, it, it brought stuff to our attention that we, that we needed to find resolution for. And the solutions that, we've, that we're finding are solutions that are going to last long beyond the pandemic and, uh, you know, and bless the, the work that we do going forward. So uh, what a lovely thing. Yeah. Well, I thank you guys for, uh, for, for, for presenting you know, uh, tonight and for, uh, for preparing this workshop. We are looking forward to it. And uh, once again, uh, it is uh, the Monday after the conference weekend. So uh, everybody, um, here is uh, post-pandemic problem solving. Thank with, you, uh, Ashley and Karen. Thank, thank you. you. Ashley, great job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.